Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. We've had some warm conditions in southern and central regions recently, but things are now changing. So I'll start by taking a look at a view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 13th. At the outset, it's actually quite a wet picture in southern counties for some heavy outbreaks of rain in places. It's drier in central and northern areas though. In the short term, that rain continues for a while, but then it clears away and cooler air begins to sweep down from the north. High pressure there centred to the northwest of the UK. It should become mainly dry. There will be showers around in northern and eastern counties, although I think they probably won't be as widespread as this particular animation is suggesting. The, the GFS has a tendency, I think partly due to its relatively low resolution, to show precipitation to be more widespread than actually turns out to be the case. But the general picture is looking fairly consistent. And then as we go through the weekend, the high pressure starts to nudge across the UK. It turns dry everywhere, those showers fade away, and it's really a settled picture into the early part of next week. By Wednesday the 21st, just a few showers perhaps in the southeastern corner, and hints, that's all they are at this stage, of more of an Atlantic influence starting to return in the northwest. So it's worth taking a look at the air uh, temperature profile associated with that animation. To begin with, the yellows and oranges are showing a warm air mass over most of the UK. It's just a little bit cooler in the far north. But things quickly change. This Arctic air starts to push southwards across all areas, at least for a time. But then later on, as the high pressure builds eastwards, air temperatures begin to recover and warm up once again. What that means for the temperatures we can expect down at the surface, 15 GMT Wednesday the 14th, 21 to 22, so it's still relatively warm in southern and central Britain, a little bit cooler there in the north. But later in the week, the nights will be turning colder as well as the days. This is showing forecast minimums overnight on Friday and into Saturday morning, single figures widely. Ground frost probably quite widespread in northern and western counties. Temperatures just holding up a little bit higher in central and eastern England. In the afternoon, the maximums are lower than we've become accustomed to in the south. 16 Celsius, 61 Fahrenheit and several degrees lower in the north. By Tuesday the 20th, as that high pressure builds eastwards and air temperatures start to recover, the values down at the surface also increase, so back up to 20, maybe 21 Celsius locally. So pleasantly warm in sunny spells towards the end of the week after that cooler period, if this is correct, of course. Rainfall. GFS and ECM forecasts here for days 0 to 5. Both show the wettest conditions to be in seven counties. That's associated with the early outbreaks of rain through the first couple of days. Most of central and northern Britain dry, the far north seeing some rain. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period, ECM on the left, GFS on the right again. The totals on the GFS chart haven't really changed significantly at all. Very, very little rain here been forecast across the UK between days 5 and 10. But ECM on the left does lift the totals, especially in central and northern counties. Differences there between the two models, just highlighting some uncertainty about whether high pressure will be dominating in the longer term or not. So, how do the deterministic models compare with each other at the end of the first week? Are they consistent or not? Here is the GFS, Tuesday the 20th, high pressure dominating things. It's a similar story with the Canadian, German and European models, mainly dry and settled if they are correct. Reasonable temperatures as well as that area of high pressure builds eastwards across the UK. Finally though, the UK met global. It looks a little bit different because the high pressure is centered to the west, areas of low pressure to the southwest and to the northeast. 
probably mainly dry at this point, but the whole thing looks a little bit more iffy and it's quite difficult to say where it will go in the days which follow. On the whole though, the end of week one, probably high pressure remaining dominant. With that said, how is week two looking? At this range, it's just about the trends and the probabilities, and I'll start with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top half, close to or slightly above the average. The thick purple line, the ensemble mean, climbing a little bit above the 30-year norm, the thick black line. It's worth just stepping back for a moment, though, because through week one, the cooler period shows up very well. All of the runs in the ensemble dipping significantly below the thick black line for several days. Also, it turns very dry, and that continues into week two. But later on, a few rain spikes do start to appear once more, perhaps suggesting a transition back to more changeable conditions. Two meter temperatures, so for ones we can expect down at the surface, not much of a trend here. The oranges remaining dominant throughout the period, so 16s to 20s, the shade of orange, and 21s to 25, this shade. Probably a little bit warmer than the norm through week two down at the ground level. Going up to Manchester, the air temperature profile is very similar to the London one. Likewise, it's a dry start to week two, but rain spikes return. There are, I think, more on this plot than there were on the London one, just indicating that if there is a transition back to unsettled conditions or at least changeable ones, it's going to be coming from the west, as is usually the case. Two metre temperatures for Manchester, lower than they were appearing on the London data table. Not too bad though, 16s to 20s in the majority. Perhaps more of a cooling trend apparent here than there was on the London data table. 11s to 15s starting to show up there through the last few days. Up to Glasgow, once more the air temperature profile is similar. It's, it's above average, a little bit early on there. It re recovers from that cooler period more quickly than the plots further south. Later on, it's dipping back towards the 30-year norm, so not really a big anomaly there showing up at any point. It is a dry start though here as well, but later on the risk of rain increases and that trend for it to be more changeable or unsettled the further northwest you head continues on this chart because there are more rain spikes here than there were on the Manchester one, which had more than the London one. Two meter temperatures for the Glasgow area. Something of a cooling trend more apparent here. The light yellow becoming very dominant, so maximums of 11 to 15 Celsius uh, after rather a warm start with 16s to 20s. Probably taken through the week as a whole close to the average, maybe a little bit below it at times there through the second half of the period. The 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure ensemble plot, so Friday the 23rd, suggests that high pressure will be having a good deal of influence at this point, more of an Atlantic influence in the Northwest. The comparable chart from the European ECM ensemble does have significant differences. Often these are very consistent, but here the suggestion is for a more changeable or even unsettled pattern to be sinking southwards by this point. There is, it's quite unusual, I think, to see that amount of difference between the two ensemble plots at 10 days ahead. The mean surface level pressure data table generated from the GEFS for York has a downwards trend, so high pressure in charge of things early on, 1,026 to 1,040 millibars, this, this shading. The yellow, so increasing, 1,011 to 1,025 millibars. Also, greens begin to return a little bit of blue there as well, and even, even one run going purple, those are all lower pressure. So the trend clearly through the second week is for pressure to be declining. Differences though between the GEFS and the European Ensemble, 
for Europeans seems to be keener to decline pressure more quickly, and that would suggest a greater risk of rain, especially in the north and the west. So, to summarise, week one, rain clears from the south to leave a lot of dry weather, but there will be some showers, particularly in the north and the east. Temperatures dip, they become below the seasonal average, leading to an increasing risk of ground frost and patchy fog, especially in the northern half of the UK. Week two, it's a dry start, and by this time, temperatures should have recovered as that area of high pressure builds eastwards across the UK. So, in sunny spells, it is likely to be feeling pleasantly warm. Later on, the chance of rain starts to increase, particularly in the northwest. There is uncertainty, though, about the extent of the transition back to more changeable weather. The European ECM model seems keener to bring back the Atlantic than the GEFS does. Temperatures often close to or slightly above the average. So, there we have it. I think if I had to choose a couple of words to sum up the weather for the next two weeks, they would probably be no drama. That, though, is a risky thing in the UK, and it won't be making any headlines either. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.